Right now, what were you doing at the age of two? I bet your mama wouldn't dye in your hair. Plus, the online shopping wars are heating up like this Florida weather. Christmas shopping starts in just a few hours. Hang out with us, y'all. The chat starts now. Chat. I'm Catalina Allers Allers. We've got Henny back, Angelia, and guest host, licensed psychologist Dr. Roxanne Lowe joining the Thanks. panel today. Very excited. Perfect day for her to be here. You'll, you'll see why in a minute. Mm -hmm. But before we get started, we want to get a check of the weather because it's summer in Florida with our meteorologist Lauren Routenkranz. What's going on, Lauren? Hey, good afternoon, ladies. We've got some storms on the radar, and that's, uh, like she said, very typical for this time of year, but uh, really looks like someone kind of lit a match across the first coast today. Lots of rumbles of thunder, pockets of heavy rainfall, and then also the possibility for that minor flooding on the roadways and some gusty winds. So let's go ahead and zoom on here. Jacksonville right now, the metro actually looking okay, but just to the north of us, looks like we're seeing some downpours, and I'm expecting this to kind of fill in from north to south with that sea breeze pushing inland throughout the afternoon. Also down towards Nocatee, they're about to get a good downpour right now, shifting a little farther south in St. Johns County. Really ominous looking clouds in St. Augustine, but they're not seeing the worst of it just yet. I am watching this particular cell in the Palm Coast area, possibly a bit of rotation with this one, but officially no warnings on the map right now for these. And if we do see anything, I'm really expecting them to just be flood advisories because the rain is falling fast and we've got them slow moving gully washers. So ladies, I'll toss it back to you. Of course, if we get any warnings, you'll be the first to hear it right here from us. Thank you, Lauren. And despite all this humidity, Lauren's hair is on point. I'm very jealous. And her <laughs> shoes are super cute also. Right. <laughs> all right, so Henny, you've been gone for an entire week. Where were you? Tell us what's been going on. Um, I, yes, I have been gone for a week. I was in the loo. I was in St. Louis. Um, I had the time of my life. I actually had the opportunity to uh, take part in, to take part as lead host in a pilot TV show that our company, Tegna, is doing. Uh, we're trying to get off the ground. Th these are a couple of uh, photos of what I experienced. One of the days we were inside, but two of those days we were outside in the heat for eight, nine, 10, 12 hours. Ooh, in, yes. in my, it was, it was brutal, but I wouldn't change a thing. Um, the show is actually called Fix My Ish. My Ish? My Ish. That's and your, the, uh, that, that that's... right there. And your Ish can be, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah, and your Ish can be anything. Ish, ish is a nicer is word for a word we can't say. Oh, yes. okay. Yes, okay, okay. yes. <laughs> yes. it's a thought. nicer word for what we can't say. Yeah. However, it's, it's a show that is community-based. We're trying to get out there and we're trying to help people in the community get things done. So we were able to get a sidewalk are replaced within a matter of hours. It was amazing how when you show up with the TV camera, how the officials got busy um, and they got that done for these seniors that were living in the uh, poor rundown community. We done a segment about um, doing makeovers on a very deserving lady who's kind of overcoming um, alcoholism oh, and wow. she's trying to get on the right path, yeah. trying to get a job. So I was able to pick out a couple of outfits for her, kind of dress oh. her and do my thing. Um, did a segment. It, it was just good and goosebumps talking about it. It was absolutely amazing to live the real life. Did a lot of will. people have to like write in for what they wanted fixed and you had to kind of pick? Yes. What I didn't pick that? the producers picked. Oh, okay, okay, and they okay. told me this is what we're going to do and it, you know, it, it turned out perfectly. You know, just the, the thought of helping someone to fix something, especially the sidewalk situation. Before we got that sidewalk fixed, these people can barely get out of their homes to walk on the sidewalk because it was just that bad. Oh, sure and it had been that way for, some wa for a while, but city officials had kind of ignored it because it was in the black community, and which often happens. So we were able to get that done, and these people were so thankful. People on the streets and from streets over were walking over, hugging us, thanking us, oh. because the community is so run down, and they are, they've been trying to get it fixed, and no one would listen to them. So that was so rewarding, and to actually help this young lady to see herself in a better, uh, be better clothing attire. Um, she, when she, you look good, you feel good. It's like, and that's, that's what, what she like. said. Yeah. That's what. Oh, she hugged me and hugged me and cried and cried. She had never experienced those type. You know, clothing. It, it was just 
absolutely amazing. And when um, I see these shows, I always wonder who pays for these things. So the clothing, no do people donate the these things, donate or them, yes. and then the sidewalk? Who does the city the, pay the for city, it? Yeah, yeah. I always the, wonder, the like, where does the, the funding come from for this kind of stuff? Yes, so you bring property. the idea to fruition, and then who pays for this? Yeah, the, it, the, it was amazing. I was so cool. happy to be there. So I'm back. Yeah, well, we missed you. A lot of people cool. missed you, so now we're glad Thank that you're you. back. Thank you. It's time for you to weigh in on some of these stories. All right. So the first one: a South Carolina soccer league is facing backlash after banning cheering good and bad when the season starts this fall. They're calling it Silent September. A representative says the board took this step because parents were not paying attention to the current rules. So when the season starts, there will be no cheering or jeering. Parents will just have to enjoy watching the game. And if they ignore warnings to remain silent, they will be asked to leave. So, Dr. Lowe, you are our president. <laughs> so I caught you on this one. You also have a child playing soccer. What yes. do you think about this Silent September rule? I think it's it's tough. You don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, we have a son ourselves. Throw the baby out with the bathwater? What? <laughs> you never heard that saying? No. That, that's a just southern saying. How do you not know? It means don't throw everything out. Yeah. Oh, my. That was cute, though. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. You know, so you don't want to just punish the whole crowd because of a disruptive parent. You're going to have that. But I think, you know, in sports, especially kids' sports, the adults on the sidelines and the parents and the siblings are as much excited to be there as the children. And I think sports is such a bringing together and a coming together of positive energy. I mean, of course, you're always going to have those people on the sidelines, but you hate to quiet down the whole crowd for a few, you know, uncanny. Yeah, so a kid scores a goal and no one can cheer for Well, you know what? Yeah. It's one of those things where one bad apple spoils the whole bunch. Right. Because you have those parents who... That's the baby with the bathwater. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you have some of these parents that's living doing this for themselves yeah. they as we all know these parents get super super overheated and yeah. next thing you know it's physical parents are on the ground fighting your kids are standing there watching this yeah. and this has been going on not just in Carolina this happens everywhere, everywhere. and this affects no one but the child yes. because they have to witness mom and dad out of character yeah. and acting crazy over a kid's soccer game. See I like it though because I mean I remember playing sports <laughs> as a child and if my parents weren't on the sideline yelling for me yeah. and you know encouraging me or saying you know no don't do that I needed that as a child. And well they I won't think get into Carolina right now. <laughs> but I think that you need that as a child I think you need that no matter what it is is positive or negative I reinforcement, really I that. think it's a good thing. And it's showing passion on the parents' yes. side and yeah. love and well, affection. And you I should think see you the way that. our son pipes up when his dad is on the mm -hmm. sideline. Mm -hmm. I could be screaming my, my whole heart out. Yeah. But when his dad stands up there to start cheering for him, I mean, he goes. It's mm -hmm. like the adrenaline yeah. force behind him. You know him. what? There was an interview I watched um, with this story. And it was a young little girl who said when her mom is on the sidelines yelling for her, she reacts the way she do out of fear. Ah, so it's a difference. It, it, it is a huge difference. I mean, that probably reflects more wow. on the parenting style yeah. than it oh, does yeah. on the oh, other yeah. kids. You're but not you going to change a parent by right. saying you're going to silence you. You're not going to yeah. change them. It's not going to so work. I don't point? see any kind of way. Now, this soccer team, it is actually um, the largest youth soccer league in South Carolina. Um, it is actually the number one reason why referees don't come back because there's a Keep yeah, there's a high turnover. Yeah, high, because yeah, high turnover, uh, high the parents, yeah. the parents acting a fool. Y'all yes. sit down somewhere. It's too much. And it's, it's, be, it's because <laughs> of the parents. Um, but, you know, um, you the, there's a rule like where that. this league in particular, the coach, when the parents are out of control, the coach talks to the parents for the first two incidents. Yeah. If there's a third incident, you get a warning and you're out. The fourth time that you keep acting a fool, the game is over. So imagine all those parents who are going to be mad. Who are going to be mad at you because the game is over because you could not control yourself. I don't think you should put the the onus on the coach though or somebody well, else. Who else I is going to tell them to, to behave? I think that if they're going to go with this, they're going to go all the way out. Then they need to have a security guard there, and the security guard sure. will do the dirty work. It needs to be a point. police, not a they security need, guard. Okay, so a well, police, whoever, so someone, someone else, else, a third party, someone, someone else who, who can take control. Yeah. But well, I mean, the thing is, you can't control other people. It sort of goes back mm -hmm. to that notion of we're trying to inflict control over other people and change people's behaviors. You can't. You can control mm -hmm. yourself, you can change yourself, but you can't change others. Mm -hmm. That parent's going to be just as unruly when they get in the car with that child and build them up in a passive-aggressive mm -hmm. stance than they are if you try to rob them of that aggression on the field. When parents act somewhere. like this, it makes you wonder what happens at the house, what happens at home. Right. If you're behaving this way in front of your kid right. and others, on the soccer field, what right. is happening at home? Not true, I think there's different I ways. I, yeah, to, I don't think so. There's also different ways of enforcing the same rule with parents because there's a local soccer league. Um, someone I know is a local youth soccer coach, and in their league specifically, there are rules where parents are not allowed to address the reps at all. And so, if they do have issues, there's 
certain protocol they go where they have to go through the coach. So I think there's better ways of addressing this issue than just yeah. Yeah. control. Yeah. 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 control. Yeah. control. Yeah. Everybody wants to control you everybody. Kick <laughs> in the fall. You kick in the fall. So I'm yeah. sure we'll hear more about it. All, All right. Well, here's something yeah. else a lot of people don't agree with. Parents dyeing their children's hair. Yep. After seeing a video of a mom dyeing her two-year-old oh daughter's hair pink, one blogger shared why she doesn't agree with this decision. She wrote in part, while I agree that kids should express themselves, I believe they need to be old enough to have something to express. Ouch. I'm not convinced a two-year-old child has this ability. Oh, gosh. They look so really cute, cute, though. It does. So would you, gr would you girls actually do this? Would you dye your child's hair? Or do you think you have the... Absolutely can you, not. Do you think you should be able to? You think not? Absolutely not. Really? Okay, so you side with the other mom. Well, you know, the thing is, I think, in general, we're just having our kids grow up so quickly. Everything is being given to them at such a young age. I mean, so what is the right age to begin dyeing your hair? What is the right age for them to be texting? What's the right age for them to be having cell phones? Mm -hmm. I mean, everything for kids is happening younger and younger and younger. I mean, it's sort of like what we were talking about about with the competitive soccer. I mean, nowadays, if you join soccer at nine years old, you're behind the game because everyone else has been doing it since they were two, mm -hmm. you know? So I think this is just kind of right up the same alley. You know, um, it appears as though she is, this mom, her name is Charity, Charity LeBlanc, she seems to be one of those free-spirited parents that is going to allow her kids to make decisions, but the, her, her daughter, whose name is Felicity, so cute, Felicity LeBlanc, she had been saying to her mom that she wanted her hair dyed because at the time her mom's hair was dyed a beautiful turquoise. So she see mom with colored hair, yeah. so she wants colored hair and she would not let up so mom finally said, okay. They actually live in Clearwater, Florida um, and she actually used a dye that is called Manic Panic. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, th th this is it right here. This is the dye. Oh, it is semi -permanent. vegan. Semi-permanent. Yeah, it's <laughs> semi-permanent. It washes out within two to three days. This is the exact color she used, the hot pink. It's a vegan dye. It is vegan. It doesn't contain, <laughs> it doesn't contain any harsh chemicals. <laughs> so basically, it's just a tint that she put on the hair, and That's it washes right out. Ploy. First of all, the fact that it says vegan is such a marketing ploy. You never really have to worry about animal byproducts <laughs> in your hair <laughs> products at all. Okay, so yeah. that's purely for marketing. Yeah. The only okay. thing that bothers me about this is that her mom being like a hairstylist and seeming to be a very big part of like this um, beauty blogger kind of community online is that they get a lot of pressure from their fans for them to constantly push mm -hmm. and see what else they can do and, and see how far their creativity can go. And I, I don't really like what she did dyeing her daughter's hair. I think buy the girl some wigs because then she can, you know, change her hair color as often as she wants and you're not doing... Is she, two years old is too young. I don't two have years a problem too with it. Young. I feel like, I mean, it's a semi-permanent thing. So, and it's fun. Look how much fun she's I know, having Shane, getting that's it what, done. That's what it's like. It's hard I for me to say that, like, fun. don't do it. But this is... But this she is, could get the same fun from a wig. But what's the point? I mean, a wig or dye, what difference does it make? You're actually putting something on the child's hair to give her a different look. So what's the difference? Let them have a little fun with it. And then so it washes out in a couple weeks. And she and had, you know what? She had her like, fill she, of pink you know what, hair. And she's not going to be begging mom for it anymore. I mean, it's just like a child begging for oh, a cookie. She'll be begging I want a cookie. 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 Mommy, a cookie. And you finally give him a cookie. And then it's like, oh, whatever. Don't want a cookie anymore. You know, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. Kids this age are going to have fun no matter what you tell them is fun. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think it's wherever you direct them. She's loving that because her mom loves it. Yes. Because her mom yes. did it with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, not because it was hair dye. Mm -hmm. If you gave her, you know, a little flower on the table and you said, Mommy loves flowers on the tables, let's do something really creative, she would be just as mm -hmm. excited. You know what? Her mom is actually this huge workout guru. Huge workout guru. And she watches her mom do all these videos in the house. I mean, crazy, strange vid uh, exercise videos. <gasps> and one time, the mom actually caught little Felicity pulling on the bars and she said to her mom look mom I am strong yeah. like you yeah. sure. so she's definitely yeah. mimicking what yeah. her mom does um, but I'm not convinced that mom didn't do this for what we're doing right now talking about it because she is huge on social media she yeah. has a YouTube oh. channel the hundreds of thousands of followers on, on Instagram um, I don't know it is what it is at this point, you Something know. She probably did it, it for the views, for the likes. Mm -hmm. Guess what we're talking about her. I like her little pink hair. It was, like, it was yeah. cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your daughter but coming up like. after the break, taking on internet trolls, our favorites. Dr. Lowe is sticking with us to talk about what makes those trolls do the things they do. We'll be right back.